at the bar with somebody and you literally watch them. You know everything they drank. They had three beers and they walk out of the place and they get a DUI for point oh nine. Go and help them fight that. Go and make sure that they don't get that shit put on their record. Go and make sure that they are not uh, taken advantage of by the criminal justice system because, okay, .09 is over the limit, you know? But, I mean, really, we, we all know people, you out there as well, who can go well above that and they're perfectly fine. It's exactly. person to person. It has to do with your height, your weight, everything about you. Uh, it's ridiculous. Don't let people be taken advantage of by the law. And the best way to t- make sure that people aren't taken advantage of by the law is to own a gun. It, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that, unfortunately, that might be the only defense the average person has because every other right that we have is being taken away. And you were talking about guns and the, the idea that it's so unusual for people to think that the government would do this. June 4th, 2013, InfoWars. West Virginia professor says NRA members deserve the firing squad for treason. Now you've got somebody suggesting that because you belong to the National Rifle Association that you deserve to be shot. <clears throat> Which most gun uh, shops, by the way, even when I went to buy this guy right here, when I went, they have a thing to sign up for the NRA completely for free. All you have to do is sign your name. So... Pretty much majority of gun owners are members of the NRA. <laughs> and yet, it, it, we all need firing squads. It says in an op-ed article for the Charleston Gazette, Christopher Swindell, Swindle, a journalism professor at Marshall University in West Virginia, says that the NRA advocates are a tre- treasonous bunch and that they should all be executed before a firing squad. In his article, he says, watching the celebration of the NRA convention over the defeat of background checks was the most nauseating experience of the day. You know, reading this article is the most nauseating experience of mine. So wait, 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 so he said they should be, he specifically said firing squad? Well, listen to this, yeah. Swindle goes on to explain that he's not a New York gun control liberal. He says that he supports having a shotgun for home defense, a handgun for limited concealed carry, and having an assortment of hunting rifles. But he says that the gun safety debate is BS. This foaming at the mouth, Obama is coming for the guns, Nanny Bloomberg is a bad billionaire, and most despicable of all, those survivors and victims are pawns and the liberal agenda is just knuckle-dragging at Cretan talk. And then he really gets riled up and says, Here it is, the NRA advocates armed rebellion against the duly elected government of the United States of America. That is treason. Well, that's not what the Constitution says. And it's worthy of a firing squad. The BS needs a serious gut check. We are not a tin pot banana republic where machine gun toting rebels groups storm the place and dispose of the dictator. No, we must just be Kyle people that deserve to be shot. So so what he's saying by comparing us to the banana republic where people carry guns and AK-47 slinged over their back and they immediately dispose of any dictator, what he's saying is we're not the banana republic we will accept our dictator. <laughs> yeah, we, we will love our dictator. Well, we, we don't need arms to protect ourselves. It's treasonous to not let the government come and shoot you. Well, let me just say, I have a message for this guy who thinks that it's treasonous to hold guns against the military. And I'm on my wireless headset with my wireless little microphone here, so we'll hold it close. I have a message for this guy, and that's this message. Indeed, because that's, that's, my message for him. that's the sound he wants you to hear. That's obviously the message that he hopes that you get. So, I mean, it's more than fair to give it right back. And I guarantee there's going to be people watching this that think that you, somehow you and I are crazy for insinuating that people have a right to defend themselves. It'll be interesting. I, I don't always get to it. It'll be interesting to see if the comment line has that at all. Yeah, and you know what? I'll say, too, that, like, I'm not uh, necessarily pro-gun, pro, you know, having a ton of weapons and stuff type of person. I'm a pro-freedom person. I'm somebody who believes that anybody should be able to do whatever they want. And to be completely honest with you, up until about two months ago when this... This whole thing with Sandy Hook and all the gun legislation started going through. I wasn't even somebody who had any interest in owning a gun. I agree. I really really wasn't. 
But the fact that you're trying to take it away from me and the fact that you're trying to tell me that I can't own a gun, well, guess what? Load up. 380, buddy. You, you know what? You know who the best gun salesman I've ever met in my life was? Is Barack Obama. You tell me that I can't own a gun, and guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go buy one. You're going to wonder just, why he's making such a big deal about it. Well, exactly. Why? Are, why? Because if anybody has sold more guns in the United States, it's him. Because he freaks a lot of people out. There's a lot of people out there like me. And I know like you, too, Sam, because you're not somebody who uh, is, like, stocking up a, a stockpile of guns. People like me and you, we didn't necessarily want to own a gun. We have supported people's rights to but the second that Obama started talking about taking away people's guns, restricting people's right to own guns, me and you, I remember, we were, we were both going to Matt Winklejohn of ResistTheTyranny.com, mm -hmm. uh, where he talks about a lot of gun owners' rights. We both were going to him, like, what should I buy? What should I get? And so, you know what? I honestly wasn't going to buy a gun for at least probably three, four years. My goal... And, and my ambition was that I wasn't going to buy a gun until I owned a home. And you know what? You got me worried. And so guess what? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think even, even more than that, it's saying that by amassing so many weapons, that it might send the kind of numbers that will make them think twice about going ahead and doing something really stupid like this to the American people. And I don't think it can be overstressed. This is a college professor that said this. He's, he's teaching. He, he's an authority. He is a West Virginia professor. Which, can I just say, like, <clears throat> of all the people that I listen to and people whose opinions I validate, I'm sorry, the last person whose opinion I'm going to take seriously is a college professor. I'm sorry. To me, a college professor, to me what that says is I'm somebody who studied for 4, 8, 12 years to do a job. I couldn't cut it in the real market. So I went back to school for two more years to teach other people how to do what I couldn't fucking do. And that's what I see in a college professor. You're somebody who couldn't cut it in the real market, couldn't cut it in the real world, and so you were dependent on government money for you to teach other people how to do what you couldn't fucking do. So I'm sorry if this makes me mad, but to me, college professors are the most useless pieces of shit on the planet. I'm sorry. I think, I, I think there are, I, hopefully, hopefully he's one of those people that you're describing. I say that because hopefully he's not one of the professors. There are good college uh, professors. Hopefully, I, I get, I'm hoping he's not one of the ones who is actually out doing it. Maybe he really is out writing articles and people are really listening to him. That's even more frightening than what made you mad. I hope you're right. I hope he's not I, one of the ones that are doing it because he's a detriment. But even the ones, like, let's say that he's out there and he's getting people to support him. Keep in mind, he's a college professor. Who are the people that he is most inclined to be around? The people who he is most inclined to uh, get his opinion out and, and get their opinion. They're people who are stuck within the same system as him. They're 19-year-old, know-nothing college kids. And I'm not saying, don't get me wrong, 19-year-olds aren't know-nothing. I'm not saying that. 19-year-olds have some really good shit to say. But a 19-year-old who's going to a university, I'm sorry, you're somebody who's scared to enter the real world. And that's not somebody whose opinion that I, frankly, take seriously. And that's the type of people whose opinion he's getting in his poll. I think, I, and I mean, who publishes this this stuff and puts it out there as Americana? Like, it's a real, real normal statement. But if somebody had said that, you know, and I'm not in favor of this, that we should all go out and shoot one set of people who are in favor of the free First Amendment, I think there'd be people freaking out. But because you're not against shooting people that are in favor of their Second Amendment rights, then somehow that's different. Because people don't know that rights means that it is given to you upon birth. Well, well, exactly, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand, is a lot of people go out there and they say, well, your Second Amendment doesn't give you that, it can be amended, it can be changed, it's like, that's what you don't get, is that, I don't get my right to fucking carry this thirty eight right here, which, by the way, my finger is not on the trigger, you don't get the right to carry your thirty eight from the collar, or the three eighty 
from the Constitution. Was it Diane Feinstein that had her finger on the trigger, by the way, of the assault rifle? Yeah. Right. It's like you don't get that right from the Constitution. You don't get your right to free speech from the Constitution. You don't get your right to be a free, uh, life-living human being from the Constitution. You get that from the second that you were birthed from your mother. That is your natural-born right. That's the point of a natural-born right. That's the specific reason that the, con the in the Constitution and in the uh, amendments that the founding fathers included, I believe it's it's the ninth or tenth amendment. The uh, 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 there's a, there's uh, innumerable rights and numerable rights. Numerable rights are the rights that were given that that are specifically laid out in the Constitution. A numerable right is a, is a, essentially in Latin a numberable right, a right that has been figured out. It's been laid out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a numerable right. An innumerable right, which is guaranteed to you by the Constitution, includes any right that they may have or may have not thought of the reason to include any right that they did not write down. That doesn't mean that just because it's not in the Constitution, it's not your right. It means that anything that is a natural right of birth, anything you should be able to do from the second you're born, is included in the Constitution to make sure that you have the rights to everything that they didn't write down. That's what yes. it is. And it's important too, the Constitution means it is the Constitution of of your liberties. It does not mean that this is what constitutes your liberties. And I think people misinterpret the word if they exactly. even do. Exactly. It's a ton of guys who sat around and they said, hey, you know what? I got a fucking right to say whatever I want. I have a right to my wife. I have a right to my property. I have a right to the things that I have accumulated and earned over the course of my life. I have a right to say whatever the fuck I want. And that doesn't mean that, like you said, that doesn't mean that the actual document gives you those powers. It means that the, the founding fathers were saying that these are things that you have from birth. We're just uh, uh, not assuming, but uh, we're, we're assuring. We're assuring. You're pointing it out, right? yes. Yeah, we're pointing it out. That's the way to the say The Constitution is a great highlighter. Those rights. Constitution, yes, exactly. the highlighter of life. Exactly, and the and the Constitution isn't just a highlighter of life and the highlighter of your natural born rights, but it's the highlighter of the fact that beyond these rights that we are specifically telling you you have, you have any right as long as it, as long as it doesn't affect anybody else, as long as you're not doing anything that takes away from anybody else's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You can do whatever the fuck you want. We don't care. Have fun. And our current government is going directly against that. Yeah, well, I, I actually heard, uh, it was, I forget the name, but I'm sure you can search it. It was a liberal Democrat saying that libertarians believing that are basically uh, expounding, expounding Satanism, because Satanism is, of course, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's also uh, wicked to some degree. What they're not, not what, really what, what, what they're what they're not realizing is the reasons that a lot of Wiccans live that way was because they in fact did want to leave other people alone, and just because that is a tenet of their religion does not mean that you are supporting their religion any more than it does if someone says that you shouldn't kill somebody. Well, then you must obviously be a Christian. That is that is pointing at the sky and looking at the finger. It is the exact opposite of what they just said it was. Libertarianism is not expounding Satanism. Libertarian hap libertarianism happens to point out one thing that might be true in an otherwise arguably flawed belief system. I think more than anything, and I think well, libertarianism can be uh, summed up pretty, pretty. It can be pretty. It can be summed up in a pretty simple way, and and that is that libertarianism is the right. Like I said before, it's it's the right to do whatever the fuck you want, as long as it doesn't directly affect anybody else. And that doesn't mean you know. I open a business, so that's going to affect his business. No, that's not what that means. What it means is, you know, I can't shoot your wife because you want your wife, and it has it. You you just 
can't fucking do it. It has no positive value towards me. All it has is negative value towards you. So libertarianism is the ultimate right, really, just to do whatever the fuck you want as long as you don't hurt anybody else. It's the most basic rule of civilization, which is pretty much uh, do unto others as you want done unto yourself. You know, that, that's, that's what it comes down Isn't to. Isn't it interesting that the person didn't point to that quote? They went straight to occultic uh, quotes. Yeah, which... Uh, so anyway, does, that, does that mean that Jesus was a Satanist? I don't think so. That's probably well, not the case. Find me a libertarian Satanist, and then we'll have a conversation. Yeah, I, we will. We will. We will find it. I'm going to jump off and do a break after this article, but I do want to go ahead and I want to stay with this because now that I'm spring cleaning, for those of you that don't know, it is the correct view, spring cleaning. Uh, we've been on the gun topic, and I want to do one more. This is June 6th. This is also InfoWars. Kit Daniels, Florida sheriff arrested after defending Second Amendment. A, <coughs> a Florida sheriff who believes in the Second Amendment was charged Tuesday for removing the arrest file of a suspect held on an unconstitutional gun charge but later released. This is, you know, they say we don't say anything good about cops. And Kyle, you're going to love this cop. Liberty County Sheriff Nicholas, Sheriff Nicholas Fetch, 50, was booked in his own jail Tuesday with one count of official misconduct by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. The FDLE accuses Fitch of covering up the arrest of Floyd Eugene Parrish after releasing him from the Liberty County Jail. Parrish had been arrested, it says, for carrying a concealed firearm without a license, a third-degree felony in Florida. And I, I like what he says here. Um, he says that he believed in his Second Amendment rights. The sheriff looked at the facts and said, I believe in the Second Amendment and we're not going to charge him. This is not misconduct at all. This is within the sheriff's prerogative whether to charge or whether not to charge. It, exactly what so many of us have been hoping would happen, Kyle, is happening. Now the sheriffs are saying, no, we will not be a part of this. Because now you're talking about good old boy sheriffs in some instances whose father took them hunting, and he owned guns, and he knows what he's talking about. And now you've got these people stepping up to the plate. Well, I, and that's a really good point, is the fact that laws aren't written for abiding citizens. They're written for people who aren't abiding. And that's like, there's a law in Chicago that says, literally no joke it says uh you it, it is illegal to fish off the back of a giraffe into the hudson river why because some asshole brought a giraffe to the hudson river and started fishing while sitting on it and it's like that law isn't written for me and you that's written for the asshole who's trying and, to cause and, and again that's the excuse they like to use that's the slippery slope i want to point out we already have laws against bringing giraffes and animals such as that onto public property. As, as, as a polar, enforce the existing law. You do not need to write a ridiculous law like this. And if they didn't have a law against uh, uh, I don't know, feral or exotic animals, then they could write an exotic animal law. They don't need to write something that is worded. They don't need that. It's stupid. It's just, it's, it, I hate to put it any way, other way, but it's stupid. And there was actually a judge recently, I read an article in Illinois, which if anybody out there doesn't know, Illinois is the only state in the union that does not have an open carry or concealed carry uh, anything. It's illegal. It's illegal to conceal and carry a gun. And there was a judge recently who said, I am not going to prosecute anybody for conceal and carry. If you bring me a conceal and carry, you know, somebody illegally concealing a weapon, you bring that to my courtroom, I'm going to throw it out. And that's good because, let's be real, like that judge, if somebody walks in and they're wearing a hoodie and they're all dirty and they got fucking, they just look like a piece of scum of the earth. And I hate to say it, but you can fucking profile people, Sam. I know you, where you work and stuff. You can, within 10 seconds of looking at somebody, you can tell whether they're a good guy or bad guy. And if you run into a good guy and he happens to be wearing a gun, well, who fucking cares? And that's what this judge is saying, is that I'm not going to prosecute for pe people for this. You bring me somebody who you pulled over, you grabbed him off the side of the road for, you know, uh, uh... Uh, walking before there's a walking light in an intersection, jaywalking or something like that, and you happen to find a gun on them, I'm not going to prosecute them for carrying that gun because, and, and it sounds to me from what I read that this guy's kind of like, well, I carry a gun too. Why shouldn't you? 
And I think the more that we see officers like this standing up, it's going to do a lot. For one thing, unfortunately, the, uh, the gun-toting culture in terms of like gangs and things, unfortunately, they're too worried about furthering their own endeavors. Instead of realizing that they would just step back and stop trying to, trying to you know, be part of the game, they'd realize that there are a number of cops that would be on their side if they just acted like human beings. And I think oh, yeah, this... I, know a ton of, I know a ton of cops who I've talked about with my profession. I run into a lot of police officers, and all of them say the same thing. They have no problem with conceal and carry. In fact, they're all for it because conceal and carry makes their job load a lot lighter. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. My friend, I'm going to run and get something to drink. Do you want to talk for a minute, or do you want to throw music up? I'll be back in my five. Oh. No, I can talk for a little bit. How about I do a little nitro pack every well, Please do, and I will be right back. Guys, you're listening to The Correct View Spring Cleaning. We are joined by Kyle Phillips. That means the day three of three is going to be, as you can see, it's we're on fire. I'll be right back, everyone. Well, Sam has to run out for a second, and I think he's probably going to pee, which we all pee. I pee, too. It's okay. No big deal. I have an IP address I pee so much. That's a little internet humor for you. But uh, what I wanted to talk to you about really quick is if you like what Sam does at The Correct Views and if you like what we do at the rest of the website at TheMediaSpeaks.com, when you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, when you see right here, right here in the top right-hand corner, this is Nitro Pack. We have other sponsors. They're all right, but the one that we really, really try and get behind is NitroPack.com. Why do we do that? Because if you like what we do, and if you like the things that we talk about, then you're somebody who should be shopping at NitroPack.com. They sell everything, and, and by the way, <clears throat> if you're going to buy from them, please, please, please click the ad right here, which will take you to their website. But not only does it take you to their website, but it tells you that you did so that we get paid as well, which is something that is really important because if you click the ad here, we get paid, which helps us do what we do. So if you click that ad and you go to nitropack.com, as I've said before, they've got everything that you're ever going to need except for guns, ammunition, gold, and silver. they got everything you need. Day one, uh, the mail stops coming. Day two, the grocery stores close. Day three, the police stop patrolling the streets. And when that situation comes, you want to be prepared. You want to get your freeze-dried fruit, food. You want to get your MREs. You want to get your freeze-dried ice cream, your first aid kits. They literally have here. They have dental kits. So you can even take care of a cavity or whatever it is by yourself, which I'm not talking about right now, fucking go to a dentist, retard. Go to a dentist to get that fixed, but when the dentist's office stops opening, you're gonna need a dental kit, you're gonna need MREs, you're gonna need survival kits, you're gonna need a tent, you're gonna need uh, water filters, and they have water filters uh, going from just like the little bottle that you fill water with and it, it, it filters it uh, basically, down to, you know, a $200, $300 filter that filters everything out, fluoride, everything. So in, a, in a, a survival situation, when you're not able to be taken care of by the system, when you're not able to get help from the police or get help from the local hospital, you can get help from nitropack.com, and you won't be helping yourself, or they won't be helping you, you're, you'll be helping yourself by using their products. So if you care about what we do and if you want to see this this broadcast keep going and at the same time, if you're listening to bro you, our broadcast, then you're clearly somebody who is worried about the future of this country and what's going to happen. And if you are worried about this country and where it's going to go in the future, well then you should absolutely be going and getting some basic necessities from nitropack.com. So just go there by clicking the link on the website. You can help us out, and you can prepare yourself for the most catastrophic disasters you can possibly imagine. That, friends, is exactly why we picked them up as a sponsor. Everything. Everything you could possibly want. Again, other than what, guns, gold, and ammo. And if they had ammo, trust me, it would already be gone. Yeah, yeah, and exactly, and uh, I'll say to other people that the, one of the main reasons that we picked up NitroPack as a sponsor is because before that, we were doing uh, Google AdSense ads, which is pretty much, you sign up with Google AdSense, which is the same way you do YouTube ads and stuff, and you just put a basic HTML for a size, and they throw whatever ad they want 
on there based on what they think will sell best on your website. They started putting on our website ads for a website that sells medals for, you know, uh, military, army, navy, mm. marines, whatever. And my thought was, wait a second, if you get an, uh, a, a military award, they give you that, right, Sam? If you, if Sam, if you were to get a, an, an award from the military, they just hand that to you, right? Mm -hmm. And so my thought is, the only person who wants to access this website is somebody who wants to buy an, uh, a medal to pretend like they earned it and go into a bar and say that they're a fucking war hero. And that's like the oh, biggest Oh, I see what you mean now. Planet. That's the biggest asshole on the planet is the guy who goes into some place and says he won an award that he actually didn't win. And I did not want those ads on our site. And I would delete it, and then they'd just move it to a different ad somewhere else on the site. So eventually, I said, fuck it. I don't want those ads on my site. I want somebody that I believe in. I want somebody that I support. I want somebody who everybody on my website supports. And that's NitroPack.com. And you will not be disappointed with the things that you get no. from there. Are there Man, we call John bought some stuff from them, and he is super happy with what he bought. He said it's great quality product. He's happy with it. So we do know people, and there's there's people. And he who doesn't buy junk. Them. Yeah, they're they're great quality products, and not just great quality products, but products that they're they're the products that you're not going to use today. You're not going to use tomorrow. But like I said, when the mail stops come in and the police stop, uh, you know, patrolling the streets, you're going to be glad that you had. <laughs> and I've, I've been telling people, too, honey, even if you're just a weekend camper, you might really want to look into a lot of the things that are on there. Yeah, and there's only, there's only really two other things. There's only two things that you need that are not on that website, and that's gold, silver, and, of course... Buy a fucking gun. Please buy a gun. Everybody should have a gun. This is a gun. This is what guns look like. Buy one. Buy one and keep it somewhere. You need one. Now, now, you were talking about mentioning police officers earlier when you talked to them. At, at, at any point in your life, have you ever annoyed a cop? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the New York Senate passes a bill that would require, that would make, excuse me, annoying a cop a felony. And this is uh, Adam Salazar They wrote this. A bill would basically allow police to arrest based on their own subjective impulses. The bill reads, A person is guilty of aggravated harassment of a police officer or peace officer with the intent to harass, annoy, threaten, or alarm a person whom he or she knows or reasonably should no, to be a police officer or a peace officer engaged in the course of performing his or her official duties, he or she strikes, shoves, kicks, or otherwise subjects such person to physical contact. They, Which they, is already illegal, by the way. Again, they, they roped in, the only reason they rewrote that, Kyle, was to add the annoying, to make it a yes, felony. Yeah. Now, we, of they course, when you're a felon, order. you can't own a gun. Which that's something that we should get me, Kyle Thalen from. Uh, he wrote for the Examiner. He's on a different website now, but we should get him on and talk about that because he or not Mikhail, me, Kyle Thalen. Uh, what's the guy's name? Who's the super anti cop guy that we had on? The guy who. Uh, oh, oh, cops ever. yeah. Uh, his name just went right out of my head. He uh, does a lot of work. I know who you mean. The guy from Dallas, in Texas. Um, well, I I, we got his name r wrong too, which we got Mikhail wrong, but that guy, uh, the same thing, we got his name wrong too when we had him on the show. But yeah, uh, that what that pretty much makes it is like, <clears throat> if you're, say Sam, right? Sam is at a protest. He's at a protest against GMOs. And Sam's got a big sign. And he's protesting GMOs. He's trying to sign it. It's like, fuck GMOs. We don't want anything to do it. Yeah, with the, you know, he's got the sign up there. And all of a sudden, a cop comes up, and he's like, fuck that. I like GMOs, because that cop happens to be the biggest asshole on the planet. And he comes up to Sam, and he starts beating him down, and he's just, he's got him on the ground, and he's punching him on the face for no reason. And the whole time, Sam's like, whoa, I'm being not aggressive. What the fuck? And he just punch him in the face. And you come up, and you record a little bit of that on your iPhone, because you're like, hey, this isn't right. This shouldn't be happening. You record a little bit of that on your iPhone, and guess what? You're facing just as heavy of charges as Sam is for doing nothing. 
So it's, it's a ridiculous thing. Pretty much what that law is, is saying cops can do whatever the fuck they want, and you better not fucking get in the way. If you get in the way, we're going to fucking arrest you, we're going to put you in jail, and we're going to make sure you never see the light of day, because nobody fucks with the cops. We're the cops. We patrol. And we're the law. That's what that's saying. And you know what? Fuck that noise, Sam. And bro, there's there, there's two paragraphs in here that are terrifying. One is... If signed into law, offenders, it says, would be subjected to the same penalties as other Class E felonies, like placing a false bomb or hazardous substance in a public place. It's Class E? And riot in the first degree. This is the lowest felony charge in New York, but can still carry a penalty of up to four years imprisonment, depending on the judge. And then lastly, in addition, the bill virtually welcomes and protects police who would provoke citizens into any kind of spat as, under the gauge, the vague language of the bill, any physical harassment can be deemed unlawful. And I, we've seen videos at nauseam, I know InfoWars has them, where the cop is begging and egging the person on to begin with. Now, I mean, I don't even know why that paragraph needs to be said if all you have to do is annoying to get a felony. Well, yeah, and, and all that does is that's a law that it's pretty much unwritten. It's not in the law, but what they're doing with that law is if they could have that law written however they wanted, if they wanted that law exactly on the books, like exactly how they want it to appear, the law would say, don't fuck with police because we'll fuck you over. That's what it says. And there's been, I'm, I used to be a... Uh, I used to be a, a, a skateboarder when I was younger. Oh, hell, I, st I, I still break my neck on them whenever I get a chance. Yeah, dude, I try. I try. I'm not going to lie. But every time I make it to the skate park, it's like two or three board slides and I can't walk for a day. And there's so many videos of police officers. There's one I remember. I, I'm looking for it, but I don't want to pull up a video that's the wrong video. Oh, no, no, no. no. Here it is right here. Can, I, I just want to play this video. Please do. Everybody. This is a video of like what we're talking about when it comes to police uh, overstepping their power, and this is a video of a cop who like the kid is just being the kid's being compliant, and they just they, the, the cop isn't allowing him to. He's like, look, we'll fucking we'll leave, you know, no big deal, we'll leave, and the cop just won't. Yeah, <laughs> oh, here, here, sorry, I have my uh, audio set up to the wrong. What's he mad about? This is, this is this at the park? Was it closed? This is a video where it's uh, here, high definition audio device. Uh, <clears throat> this is a kid who, you know what? You know, he was breaking the law. I'm not going to deny that he was breaking the law. He was skating in a place that he shouldn't have been. And the cop comes up, but the, the way the cop comes up is immediately uh, 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 confrontational. The kid is non-confrontational, and the cop just, the cop is the one who escalates it. And here, I'll play this now, it should play fine. Oh, I might have to refresh it. But the cop, like, the kids, like, and, and I will say, like I just said, the cops are illegally skateboarding, you know, they shouldn't be skateboarding on private property. But at the same time, like, this kid, he's like, hey, like, what it is is his buddy has headphones on. And the guy's yelling at him, and he's like, hey, this he has headphones on, he couldn't hear you, you know, like, we're leaving. And the cop just, like, uh, he escalates it. There's a free ad for whoever the fuck that is. I don't know why that isn't playing. Well, I don't have my tasty. headphone in. Oh, I don't have my headphone in. Okay, that's why I can't hear it. But these kids, like, they're, they're pretty respectful. Here we go. Get defensive with me, son. I didn't hear you. Can you hear that? No. No. Well, what he's saying is like the guy, he's like, he's like, didn't you hear me? And the kid's like, I didn't hear you. I had headphones on. He's like, who's your fucking father? Who are you? Who are you? And he's like, man, I didn't hear you. Like, and they got, sit down, sit down. I'm not a goon. Oh, he looked like. You're your your mother. What a he's Nazi. He's like, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I was just skateboarding. You're, I'm not a goon. One more time. 
Looks like a girl and talks like a girl. He's just giving this kid shit, and like, don't get me wrong, I'll be the first to say that nine times out of ten, when there's a confrontation, being the police and the skateboarder, it's usually the skateboarder, you know? But like, this kid's being completely compliant. He's like, look, I didn't hear you, I had my headphones on. Like, I'm, I'm being compliant, we won't skate here anymore. I'm not a fucking goat! You don't talk to me like that! And it's like, dude, no offense, but you are a fucking goat. No and shit. And two, this kid wasn't trying to disobey you, he was just skateboarding. And you know what? Skateboarding's fun, that's what kids do. Kids fucking skateboard. I'd rather see a kid fucking grinding a rail than see a kid doing heroin. That's just me. I don't know. <laughs> Especially since, at least where I live, they don't really maintain the skate parks very well anymore. Yeah, exactly. Well, where I live, they have been doing a good thing. I will, I'll give credit where credit's due, Sam. And what they do where I'm from is they've been building a lot of skate parks for good. the reason that they're like, hey, we don't want kids skating all over this public property, it's a nuisance, blah, blah, blah. So we'll build them a skate park. And what they did in, in where I'm from, Lake in the Hills, <clears throat> they build a skate park right next to the police station. Oh. Which I think is a, I think that's a great idea. You yeah. know, the police, you, you, all the people who you're so worried about, well, one, you're giving them a place to skate, which is really what they're looking for. And two, you're giving them a place to skate where you can watch them, which they generally don't have a problem with because they're not doing anything illegal. Mm -hmm. But when a kid's skate park, skating past, you know, a, a grocery store or whatever, uh, fucking let him be, you know? And this kid, it's like, he even said right when the cop came up, he's like, the cop, he didn't hear him at first, he had headphones, and he takes his headphones off, and he's like, hey, man, like, I'm sorry, we were we were trying to cause a problem, we're just skating, we're, we'll leave, you think I'm a fucking goon? And he's like, no, you know, like, we just want to I don't skate. even know what goon means. Yeah, I know what a goon means, and I know that he is one, I'm glad I wasn't at that situation. Because oh, I'm, I'm telling you, he got... It gets worse and worse and worse. I'm going to stick with cop news if you want. Man charged with DUI despite blowing uh, zero, zero, zero. Robo Sam. I've never seen that before. Did I Robo Sam? You just Robo Sam, sir. That's a, that's a first. Uh, a man charged with DUI despite blowing point zero, zero, zero during a breathalyzer test. CBS. Arizona authorities charge a man for driving under the influence despite him blowing a .000 on a breathalyzer test, but they weren't goons. KNXV-TV reports that 64-year-old Jesse Thornton, a native of Ohio, was recently pulled over by surprise, that's the city, surprise police after he recently left an L.A. fitness gym. Thornton then says that the officer accused him of driving drunk. He walked up and said, I can tell you're driving DUI by the look in your eyes. Thornton said he was given a sobriety test. I take my glasses off and he says, you've got bloodshot eyes. And to which I said, I have been swimming at LA Fitness.